Hello folks, welcome to this next segment on creating mass hall diagrams. So uh, you'll notice on our design here, we've got a existing ground surface, we've got a corridor built, we've got a couple of corridor surfaces made, and uh, I think I'm ready now to create a mass hall diagram. So you will have had to uh, create some sample lines along your alignment also as well. So check to make sure you've got some sample lines that you're gonna use for your volumes. Also, you will have to have had to compute your materials. And uh, if you haven't had done that, then you'll probably wanna go back to the previous segment on calculating volumes and check that out first. So once you've got those things in order, now you're ready to go ahead and calculate or create your mass hall diagram. A mass hall diagram basically just tells you the amount of volume uh, as you're, you're accumulating as you run through the range of stations. So if you check out your volume report, you'll notice that your volume report uh, takes a tally of a station by station uh, cumulative total uh, as you run through the range of stations. And it tells you as you're moving into different uh, areas of cut and fill, uh, how much material you're cutting and filling as you move towards the end and gives you a cumulative total. Your mass hall diagram is kind of like this except just uh, it puts this information into a visual grid for you to uh, visually inspect. So we're going to first go to the Analyze tab on our ribbon and uh, you'll notice there's a mass hall uh, button there. We're going to go ahead and select that and uh, we're going to pick your alignment. Uh, make sure you pick your sample line group. That's very important, even, especially if you've got more than one sample line group created. Make sure you pick the one that you're using for your earthworks. Uh, go ahead and select Next and we'll run through there. Typically we'll want to use a total volume, but you can break that up into cut and fill uh, only if you like. Uh, go ahead and select next. Uh, we'll talk about the borrow and dump sites and freehold distances in a minute. But we'll go ahead and create a diagram. I usually like to put it uh, just above or below my profile so I can compare it against my profile. Uh, go ahead and select it. And a new, uh, it looks similar to a profile grid. You'll notice that horizontally your station is, uh, your stationing is along the bottom. And uh, you'll notice on your vertical axes, uh, instead of elevations, you've got cubic meters in this case of total. So this line here in the center, that represents your balance line. That zero value uh, is your balance. So that's when you're uh, neither a cut nor a fill. And normally the goal is to try to keep that uh, your mass hall line, which is this line right here, uh, along as close as you can to that balance line throughout the entire range of stations. So you'll notice uh, in this section here for the first few hundred meters, uh, I start to uh, accumulate more material. So any of these values that are positive on your vertical axis indicates that you have an excess of material. If you are below the balance line in the negatives, that means you are uh, owing material. You need more material to fill in those areas. So in this case here, the first few hundred stations, it looks like I'm in a, in a cut situation. I'm starting to take on uh, uh, material and you can visually cross-reference that to your profile grid by checking out uh, your finished ground profile and how it intersects with your uh, existing ground. So you'll notice that uh, the first few hundred stations, I'm in a uh, cut situation. I'm starting to take on material. And at about station 700, just a little bit past 700, I cross grade and I go uh, into a uh, fill situation. And you'll notice that on your mass hall line, whenever your mass hall line changes direction, that means you've crossed grade. So uh, that's one indicator there. So, and at about uh, station 1400, it looks like we're out of balance and then we start to go into a uh, uh, fill, excessive fill where we're needing uh, more material to fill in those areas. Now you can dynamically adjust this stuff uh, at any time. So if you would like to make some alterations to your finished ground profile, you can go ahead and manipulate your finished ground profile uh, and then go ahead and rebuild your corridor and uh, your mass hall diagram will update dynamically for you. So you can uh, feel free to make those edits at any time. 
And if you select your grid and uh, go ahead and select Edit Mass Hall View Style, you'll notice that this interface looks pretty much exactly like your profile grid. So all the same uh, tabs there are available. You can go uh, select any of those options and change anything accordingly. Now as far as the Mass Hall line goes, if you go ahead and select your Mass Hall line and go ahead and right click, you can select Mass Hall Line Properties. And in this box here, you can change how that uh, Mass Hall line looks. Also, you can uh, go to the balancing option and you can add in, say, like a boral pit or a dump site. So if you wanted a place to uh, maybe grab some excess material, if you need it, you can go ahead and add a boral pit in at a particular station and uh, the amount of capacity that that boral pit's going to hold. Okay. You can also add in dump sites. So if you have an excess of... Uh, uh, soil then you can go ahead and dump it at that uh, location of your choosing and uh, uh, supply capacity for it at uh, any time so that'll if you have those options you can go ahead and add those in as, as well and that'll help uh, you know keep you a little bit closer to the zero balance if you do have those options sometimes they're not available so you don't have those options the free haul button here allows you a free haul distance based on our discussion in class about uh, contracting and costs and uh, free haul distances and how they work with our uh, mass haul diagram so if you do have the option to have a free haul contract then you can go ahead and specify a distance if you like and uh, that might help as well for your uh, reducing costs for the for the job so I can say OK and then it will show me a uh, representation here uh, graphically with with uh, uh, different color schemes. So anything in green means it's free. I do not have to pay for that amount of material being hauled. Anything in red means that I'm going over my free hold distance and uh, I'm going to have to pay for that amount of material. So if you can keep it in the green, that's good. Uh, but if you're in the red, you're going to have, you know, an excessive amount of cost uh, available there. And you can always go back into that mass hull uh, line property box again and just turn off that free hull distance if you like and it'll go back to normal. Now if you pick your mass hull line again, right click and then go into the edit mass hull line style, you'll notice there's a few tabs here. So one way to uh, calculate your mass hull is to go from a balance point. So whenever you are in a zero balance, it will start to uh, add those green and red shadings in. You can also do it from the grade point. So whenever you uh, uh, change grade or cross grade, then you can have that add uh, those color hatching in as well for your free hull distances. And uh, you can change the colors any way you want and the hatching as well down here. So that's uh, how you build a mass hull diagram and uh, they complement your profiles very nicely. So feel free to utilize those for a graphic representation and they really let you uh, be able to see where your material uh, in cut and fills are being accumulated and how you can adjust your finished ground profile uh, accordingly to help get those values down. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Bye now.